All right, it says I'm live. Let me give it a minute to catch up and be ready here. Make sure that it looks like it's doing everything it should. Welcome everybody, and there we go. And it looks like it caught up and we're good to go. There's always that little bit of delay, so I always like to wait and make sure that uh, it went live like it's supposed to. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Washington. Um, I'll try and keep an eye on my desk. If it starts getting really bright and glary, I'll have to close those curtains behind me, but um, we don't get to see the sun as much in Washington as I would love to. So I always try and take advantage of those sunny days and let that sun shine in um, when I can. I think Leah got to experience how when you're under these lights and when the sun shines in, it can get a little warm too. So that'll be the other reason that if it just gets overheated in here, I might have to close those um, window blinds. So. If I miss it, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know. But welcome, everybody. I am excited to be here today with you using um, the fluttering butterflies that was from our last washi release. While there is a washi, I believe the washi is sold out. I'm just using the stamp and dye and stencils. Uh, many of you might have it on hand already uh, because it was also part of our last big Create and Connect card making event. Um, and I used it a little bit for that, but I haven't had a chance to use the stamps and stencils and all of that. So I'm kind of excited to play with it a little bit today. I kind of have a little bit of something in mind. I'm planning on um, doing one of those two for one card things because you get so many beautiful elements. Um, and I love a two when you can kind of do all the work for one card and end up with two cards in the long run. So, um, and I see Leah's there in the comments. As she just men mentioned, she is visiting family in Texas. She's not in her usual Minneapolis. So there's some big storms coming through. So if I miss some comments and she doesn't reply to them, just know she might have dropped out or lost reception. So I will do my best to keep an eye on the comments. Um, I don't think my cards are super complicated today, so I should be able to kind of do that. But if we both miss things, just know, um, ask it again, and we'll hopefully catch it on the second go round. So, um, but welcome. Let me go over a couple things before we turn this around and get started, because if I keep rambling too long, then we might have trouble getting everything done. Um, first of all, if you are new here, please leave us a little uh, comment in the chat there. We'd love to welcome you and say hi. Uh, I'm going to say hello now in case I miss it when I start crafting. But um, all of our other friends who join us regularly are really great at welcoming you. And they love to um, say hello as well. Um, we do give away, let's see, someone just asked about reordering the washi. And Betty, absolutely. A lot of times our washi releases, the washi itself sells out quickly. Um, but we always reorder and yeah. We, we never get rid of it that quick. There's some time down the road where we discontinue things, but the new ones, um, we definitely reorder. Sometimes it just takes a little time to get those uh, made and shipped to us. Um, especially if you're joining us new, a uh, little information on giveaways. We do a giveaway every week um, and for everyone who's watching live. So we give away a $15 gift card. The way you enter for that is just what you're doing already, leaving lots of comments in the chat. You can chat with each other, ask us questions, um, just whatever you kind of want to um, do in there and visit with each other. Uh, another way that you can enter to win that giveaway is by sharing this video. If you grab a link here of this video, you can go share it on your own social media in a message to a friend that you want to come watch with you. If you're part of a crafty group and you know it's allowed with the rules, you can share it there. Then pop back over here and leave a comment in the chat just letting us know you shared, and that counts as an extra entry. But that's the only way we know that you shared. Um, and then finally, one other thing we really appreciate is if you give this video a thumbs up. That's just kind of below the video. Um, it doesn't necessarily count as an entry for the giveaway, but it helps just our reach with the video, helps more people find us, uh, both on the live and the replay. And if you're enjoying watching, we really just appreciate you doing that. I just saw Crafty Girls. She coming on there. She's new and a butterfly lover. So perfect timing. I'm glad you were able to join us today. Um, Let's see, I think that covered everything. Um, the only other thing I'll mention is everything I'm using today is already released. It's all linked in the video description. So if you, I'm using a lot of ink, so I just inked, um, li linked the ink cube families. Um, we're gonna be using the ink cubes just because it was a lot of inks to pull out. Um, so, but everything's linked down in that video description. So I'll try and show everything as I use it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but it is all linked down there just to make it a little easier. We've tried to start doing that. Um, that way, if you're like, wait, what was that set again? You can just pop down there and hop over and find it. 
um, and see if you have it already. Sometimes that's the way that goes. Um, or if it's something you decide you want to pick up or put on your wish list, that's an easy way to do that. With that, I think I've covered everything I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera around and we'll see if we can get started on our card for today. Okay, there's always that moment delay while the camera switches. Um, this is what we're going to be using today. I already have, I have one panel of that washi pulled out. So here's just kind of a look at that beautiful washi. Um, and if you have that, these cards would be really easy to recreate if you just decide you want to use the washi. But as with all of our washi suites, um, the coordinating guys work on the washi, which is so much fun. This made me fall in love with washi tape, our white washi tapes. And you can get, just peel it out, stick it down, cut it out. And you've got all these beautiful elements for cards. Um, but then, you know, you don't really want to spend your money on a die that's only going to work for the roll of washi or, you know, if you get a couple roll, whatever, it just feels like, oh, I don't know if I really want to pay for a die for that. So of course, then we also provide the stamp and the layering stencils. So you can create your own custom version of that same design. And that same die works with the same um, set. And then we also have for this set, we actually, the coordinating dies are for each of the sentiments. We generally provide the coordinating die for those scriptier sentiments. Um, if they're more just like straight, easy to trim onto a little strip or a banner, then we don't. Um, but we have those on there. So let's go ahead and get started by stamping this today. I see lots of chat in the comments about the eclipse. Um, I saw that Leah took some photos and she's down in Texas visiting family. So I got to see those, but up in Washington state, I don't think we would have seen much anyway, but it was completely overcast. So it just looked like a gray Washington day and there was really nothing at all to see. Um, I just realized I did forget to trim down a piece of paper because I'm going to see, I'm going to see if I can fit this um, stamp set. It's all of our washi sets are a little bit too long for just the standard size misty. Quite a few of them will fit in diagonally. So let me test that and see. I think it's a tight squeeze, but I think we can, let me just confirm that it, actually, you know what? Hmm. It actually almost looks like it'll fit in. Let me give this a try. Actually, I'm wondering if I might be able to make it fit. Let me tip that up. You know, I think it might just cut off like the teensiest, like it wouldn't have as big a border on the very outer edges. But you know what? I think I am just fine with that. So I think we're just going to go with that today because I'm just feeling like that's going to be good enough. So I'm gonna be really careful, make sure I've got this really pressed down into the corner there. Um, Cause we have so many to use that you're never gonna notice um, if just when the dies cut out, cause the whole stamp image will fit on here and it'll be fine. Um, it's just when it cuts out that border around, it might cut it a tiny bit off, but I don't think anyone's even gonna notice or even gonna see. So, all right, I'm gonna make sure this is cut down. Now I'm gonna try something fun. I've seen these butterflies done a lot in um, like heat embossed in white. And I have this embossing powder I got from Simon Says Stamp that's cream colored. And I thought it would be kind of a fun twist, kind of like a really light, so not a gold, not the black stamping, not even like the gold pearl or white, but kind of something that'll add a little more contrast than just white. So we're gonna give that a go today and see, and then we'll use a bunch of ink colors. I already mentioned I'm using ink cubes. Um, Someone's saying something about a larger size Misty. There is the big 12 by 12 memory Misty and I have that. Um, it's just kind of big and bulky and it's so big that if I put it, it's so tall that it hits my camera on the way up. And so I have to kind of like move it off every time I stand. So it's just kind of a bit clunky for using in live. So I kind of tend to, there we go, add a little, a lot of in, um, the powder tool in there. Anyway, so I try and make it work with this if I can. And a lot of people don't want to spend money on that really big one. Um, so we kind of try and find ways to make it work. Uh, I used just any, you can use, there's lots of different options with this, but since I'm heat embossing, I like to use a powder tool on my cardstock just to make sure that um, none of the powder sticks anywhere except where I'm stamping. 
you don't want extra little bumps of embossing powder in other places. So, and I'm just using clear embossing ink and I'm probably gonna stamp this a couple times. Um, so we're gonna just start with one time over and then again, make sure that stays pressed down in that corner. Ink that up again. Nice and well inked up. And I just really wanna make sure I have a good impression. I feel like a lot of times using um, the embossing uh, powder or the powder tool on there just kind of dries the paper out. So it takes a little more work to make sure that ink gets on there all the way. So I'm even going to stamp one more time just to make sure my impression is as good as it can get. I know Cynthia, a slimline misty would be amazing. I think we've put um, put that idea out there. So we'll see. You never know. All right. Here we go. It looks like I've got a great impression. I can kind of tip that around. So I'm going to set this aside and grab a little piece of cardstock out here. And we're going to get some embossing powder sprinkled on there. Oh, yeah, that looks like that's sticking really, really well. So that's a good thing. Oops. See little clumps and bumps in my embossing powder. I don't think, like I said, I got this one and I don't think I've even used it yet. All right. Make sure I've got all of the spots on there that I want. Looks like it's covered nice and well. And hopefully um, you can see it a little better than typically you would see just white embossing powder on there. So hopefully that shows up slightly. I'm sure it's really light. All right, I'm going to just wipe a little bit of that embossing powder off my desk because it drives me bonkers. And then this is a nice big image, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set this, and I'll be right back. All right, I think that all heats up. Let me kind of tilt it around and look for any dry spots. This one's a little harder to actually see if there's any spots I didn't hit because it doesn't have as much um, spots on there. Not as much shine as like a gold or something like that. All right, I think we got that. I, I'm i sure that that really shows up. Not as much as I was kind of hoping it would for you guys. So um, let me look real quick. Just double checking the comments to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, and then I'm gonna hit that desk again just to get all of that powdery stuff off of there. Okay, it looks like we're good. It looks like it's cooled enough. Like I said, I kind of followed it. I was hoping it would show up a little more, but I haven't really used this yet. So it was a little bit of a, a surprise and adventure for me as well. Okay. So this is going to be a little fun to line up. I can already see. So I'm going to have to kind of have to bear with me. I'm going to have to pull this a little bit 
closer over to me so I can see. And I think as I start ink blending, I have a feeling it's going to be like, you know, those invisible ink kind of things where it's just going to start popping out that image for you. And I'm hoping you'll be able to start seeing it as we do that. So. Get that lined up there. I'm gonna grab some tape and we're gonna tape this down really good. A little extra tape on a couple extra spots just to make sure we're well covered there. I don't want any of this to move. Um, I see Leah saying something on there about our hot foil and letterpress event in June and registration is open on that one. Like officially open. I feel like we have been waiting for forever and we've had so many times where we planned on doing it and then it got pushed later than we planned. Um, so very excited to finally have that um, going and rolling. So, all right, let me grab all my inks. I'll be right back here. All right, when I mentioned I'm using Lots of ink. I really did mean I'm using lots of inks. I'm using all of these colors here. I'm going to pull these down. These are going to be the ones we're going to use for the butterflies, some combination of them. So I'm just going to kind of pop them on here. And you can't remember. Yeah, I think it goes that way. Pretty sure. I'm just going to pop all these colors and I'm going to grab my blending brushes. I'm going to keep these all off to the side. And I don't even know, I'm just gonna kind of make my mind up as I go, which colors I wanna put where. So using my lightest blending brushes and I'm thinking, let's just do, let's see. We'll just start down here. Cause I think pink, yeah, there's like three, three, three. So it really doesn't matter what color. So we'll just start here with the pink. And then, oh, look at that. I hope you can see kind of all that detail starts to pop back out. So I'm going to really focus on getting the deepest color at the center of the butterfly and then just kind of let it fade out as we go to the outer edges, if that makes sense. So we're going to get deeper at the center and then go out to a softer outer. Love that look. Okay, so we'll do that there and then maybe we'll hit kind of down here with that mimosa. I see I'm kind of going in. I could go softer, but I'm kind of okay with it getting nice and deep in the center. And that's ink is gonna soften up as it dries, of course, too. So it's like anything else. I am not doing as good. I still see Leah on there though. So if I see her vanish, I'll try and watch the comments better. But I think especially with all of these little different colors going and everything and having a harder time watching, keeping up with the comments. So I'm just going to kind of check in every now and then and hopefully not miss anything too important. All right, let's close up all of these inks. I feel like I don't use my ink cubes near enough. Um, and that little ink cube stand is super handy here. I'm noticing too. All right. So this is our first little reveal. Oops. There a little more. All right, let's pull that up. All right, so it's just kind of a start, but I feel like it's a really good start. We'll just kind of keep moving, moving on through our stencils. And again, I'm just gonna apologize in advance for how I kind of have to like pull them to me to really find my spot because it's a little harder to see than I anticipated with that cream color. But I also am assuming on camera. You probably can't see much of that anyway, so it's probably not really um, something that's hiding from you anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it too bad. Okay, so now we've used all of our first colors. Let's move up to the next tone of each of these. Oh, that comment there, I always take a photo of my inks when I love a combination. I also, since I blog post mine quite frequently, I'll take a picture of the finished project with just the ink cubes real quick. 
So then I remember when I post what ink color, usually I can tell, but every now and then um, I get lost on what ink color or which sometimes it's just a tone in a family. Like did I use peony or begonia or something like that? And so I always like to do that as well. All right, I'm gonna do a quick clean of these three brushes real fast because I think I've used all of these for deeper tones. So I want to get that deep color off of my, because I have one set of brushes for my lightest colors and then one for all my mediums and darks. And so what we've discovered is if you spray just a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a microfiber cloth, you can, it does a really great job of just cleaning and degunking your brushes. Um, I don't know if you can even see there just how the white of that or the tip of that kind of got whiter and cleaner just by doing that. Do the same. So let me show you here. See how dark and green that one is. And then I can kind of brush it on there on that. Just, I just put a little spritz of rubbing alcohol and then wipe it around on the dry area. And then look at how much that lightened up. That's such a good job. And it's such a quick, easy way to do that. Okay. Let's, now that I've got all these open and we've got these all cleaned and ready to go, let's do the next layer of these. And this is with Peony, which is a deeper color. So I'm going to be a little more careful on, I'm still going to go fairly bold because I really want a decent pop of color from that. I just don't want it to get too crazy dark, you know? Same, I'm going to stick with the same. I'm just going monochromatic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, a morning croaky voice there. Um, so I'm keeping all the pinks together. I'm keeping all of the orange ones together. Just adding on that next tone for the next layer. And again, focusing that deepest color at the center and then just fading up to the lighter tone. All right. Yeah, and I think the question about rubbing alcohol, it is, it's just what you get from your local drugstore. I believe 70% is correct. Uh, just the standard. All right, let's. Oops, get all these moved out of the way again. I'm gonna set up my next ink colors here. And then let's just do a quick little clean off of our ink on here before we peel this layer off. And here's where you can really start to see more and more of these butterflies kind of coming to life. All right, on to the mostly final layer on the butterflies. There's still, um, one more little detail layer that's part of the leaf layer, but this is the main finishing touch on these. This one has less layers on it to line up, so it's a little bit quicker to get it all in place. That taped in place. All right. I don't need to clean my brushes now because I'm going from... Um, the lighter of the darker shades and just moving my way up. The inks I'm using, yes, I'm using them right in the color families of four. That's kind of why I set them up here on the side so you could see each one as we went through. Um, and as we're progressing through the colors. So we'll start up here with Begonia here for this next layer. It's just gonna add, again, a little more depth to these final layers. And these are itty bitty ones, so I don't need a ridiculous amount of ink really because we're just kind of building some of them building on top some of them just doing smaller areas these are going to come through really quick and then bay leaf which is the third so right now we're on the third stencil and the third in each of these color families which makes it really easy to put these together and build them up okay like I promised, those went pretty fast. So I'm going to put all these off to the side. You can see why I'm using the ink cubes today with how many inks we're going through.
Okay. And we're almost done there. Whoops. Sorry, a little extra. Almost done with the butterflies. Look at how fun those are coming together. I really like that. The cream and Boston powder is just a little bit different. It kind of stands out from the white background a little, which is super fun. All right, next layer has, let's see, I'm just messed up here. We're gonna go to stencil layer four next. We've got to do four before we do five on this because this is the first layer of the greenery. So, go that into place. And for this, I'm gonna pull out two other color families. going to be our greenery colors. And I'm going to move these ones off to the side now. Almost dropped all those off camera. We're still going to need these for the final layer on the butterflies. But for now, I'm going to move on to these cubes. And I think I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to do turquoise and Atlantis. And then I'm going to do spurs tips and lush forest for the layers of the leaves. So I'm gonna kind of skip around in the colors a little bit. I think that's what I like, pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna do the same quick cleaning off of my um, blending brushes for these. So let's get a little spritz of alcohol here and I'm gonna clean my more turquoisey brushes. Could have done this in advance if I planned ahead, but I did not. And then also do the same with the green one. I think I've got those clean and a little bit better there. All right, now the reason I picked these two color families, I love mixing and matching. Leave that down below there. I love mixing and matching blues and greens on greenery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the blue, the turquoise, and we're going to come in. Let's see. I'm going to make sure I'm getting. All right. I'm going to come in with the turquoise first, and we're just going to kind of go. So we're starting at the base of the leaves, just same thing like we did for the butterflies. I'm going to go fairly, I said, a little bit bright and bold with the colors, just because with the pop with the um, that cream embossing powder, it's gonna work, I think, really well. Same thing here on this one down here. And then before we change stencils, this is where the fun kind of comes in. Down there, I'm gonna come in, actually, let's clean a little bit of that extra ink off just so we don't mix and match. We're gonna grab a little bit of spruce tips and we're just gonna come in at the base. It just really deepens up that shading and gives that shadow. I hope you can kind of see that, how it kind of changes that color and adds such a fun, fun effect. Blues and greens just play together so well. And depending on which ones you do, it just gives such a fun look and a fun effect. And I'm really sticking this just at the base so that I don't, don't overwhelm the blue with the green. All right, let's close these ones up. All right, are you ready for this reveal? I love these colors together on, on the green right there. Whoops, okay, come on. There we go, look at that. I'm loving how these colors are working. All right, we're on our final stencil layer, which is gonna be nice and easy to line up if you look at all of that greenery that um, doesn't have any color on it yet. And then also all of the little final detail layers on the butterflies. I know it's probably really, really hard to see on screen here. And I'm so sorry for that. I didn't realize, again, I mean, it's going to be pretty in the end. So even if you can't see, you can see when it gets stenciled on. But I really planned on it uh, being a little more visible. All right. So we got a lot going on on this layer. I'm going to keep 
these final darkest shades of all the families for the butterflies, but I'm going to stick with the greenery in the greenery colors, of course. I just don't want to mix and match them together. So I'm just going to be careful. I think, I don't think I really need to mask because nothing is too terribly close. And as I'm sitting here looking, I'm actually, I think I'm going to go back from Atlantis and just go to paradise on this. And I might even just stick with spruce tips. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to still stick with that color or just the deeper blue. I'll open up the lush horse and then we'll decide when we get there. But let's start with paradise on. I just feel like going up to Atlantis. Oh, okay, I got to pay attention here. I'm going to cover up the greens and just only open the blues right now. I'm afraid I'm going to like lose track of what I'm getting my color from here. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is the right call. It felt like a little bit much to go up so dark. All right, make sure I'm paying attention here. So I'm sticking on just the greenery, not overlapping on the butterflies. All right, that does a good job on there. So let's carefully clean some of that ink off. I don't want to smudge it into where the butterflies are. So I'm trying to be kind of kind of cautious. All right. And then God, I think I actually am just going to stick with the spruce tips. I'm kind of liking that tone. And I don't feel like I need to go all the way up to Lush Forest. I think I can get a similar look just sticking with that same green tone. And it's just going to provide a deeper layer with what's already there. I think it would just be a bit much if I went too far up, you know, I don't want to, don't want to overdo it. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna call that good there. Uh, Candy, these are all, they are the newest ink colors. They're not brand, brand new. They've been out since the end of last year, um, I think last fall. So they're they're fairly, fairly new, but not like just brand new, just released. New enough to still be fun. All right, final, I'm just gonna stick again, fully monochromatic on the butterflies. So we're just gonna match all these little spots with the darkest color of each of these. And I'm not really worrying about shading because they're just in little tiny areas. I'm just kind of popping it in there in the darkest shade of each of these color families. Mostly it's the centers of the butterfly, like the butterfly bodies, and then um, some little detail dots on different places there. It's going to be, I hope, a really fun effect there, finishing those off in the color. All right. Let's cover all these up just so I don't stick my arm in them. Let me move some of the inks out of the water without dropping them. Let that ink stand out of the way. I'm going to do a quick little clean here of these, just a little so that nothing gets too messy when I pull it off. And then let's do that final magic reveal. Look at how pretty those are. Butterflies for days. I love it. Okay. I will clean these stencils off later with um, rubbing alcohol, just like we did with the brushes. Just spritz it on and brush it off. It does a really great job of cleaning those. But for now, let me put a couple things away. Let's go ahead and die cut these um, so we can have them ready to start arranging and putting on our cards. Things out of the way here. One of those coordinating dies. I'm going to grab my... Um, because these are long, you can either die cut them in two pieces or we kind of have a trick for our Gemini to um, create the extended plate. Um, it's basically two big shot um, Sizzix plates, the extended plates, one on the bottom and then two together for the top taped with um, a hundred pound cardstock shim. Now, just because Gemini doesn't have extended plates, the original, we always mention it's not the recommended plates um, situation. So if you um, are still have your machine under warranty, um, 
just be aware of that. We've never had any problems with it, but we always just like to kind of provide that disclaimer. Now I'm going to note one thing you might notice on here. The, the dies you have don't have this. I forgot that this was the initial and we had a, a little piece that got removed there. So ignore that little die. If you have these, you don't have that on there. I just got mine early from the event because I needed to use it. So we just kind of had the sample version. Um, and those aren't on the final one. So I kind of forgot this was still that one until I started using it. So I'm going to go die cut this real quick and I'll be right back. Right. Make sure everything, yep, it all looks like it die cut beautifully. Put back over here. Pull all these pieces out here. All right. I'm just going to clean that up later and not worry about it at the moment. Over that little piece that we don't need. And then let's. And leave it, yeah, I've heard a lot of people that really love having an empress. Ah, I do see one little spot, you can't really even tell. I did get a little bit of orange ink on that leaf, but you know what, it actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it maybe would have. So I don't feel too bad about that. So that's a good thing. All right, I think the greenery is the only thing that really has those little chads to poke out. So I'm not doing too bad there. Not too many of them. So we've got our greenery pieces here. And then we've got three of each of the colors of the butterflies. We're going to kind of just lay all those out here. All right. And then my other little pieces here. Because I used that cream embossing powder, I thought it would be kind of fun to mix um, cream and white cardstock. So you kind of got that mixed effect of the two. Um, together. So I've created some card bases out of the Spellbinders. I think it's just called cream or I think it's actually called alabaster. Um, it's just a cream cardstock. Then I have some panels of white and I pulled out this is actually quite a bit of an older set. We have plenty in stock right now and it's one of my very favorite um, kind of original essential dies. You can just tell by the packaging that it's part of the old original ones. So I'm going to create two cards. We're going to do one with a smaller window in it and one with the larger window because we've got bigger greenery and smaller greenery. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of have a little um, compare and contrast in there. And then this will leave us room at the bottom to put our sentiments and kind of have just a couple of different looks with these. So I'm going to just do my best here to center each of these. That, take that in the middle. Okay. There. All right. And then we're going to die cut these one at a time. And I'll be right back. There's one. Pop this one over and dike this one real quick too. Okay. Both these off of here. And we've got these fun little, you can always keep and use these for something else. I love those little starburst pieces from the inside. So don't toss those. Those might turn into another layered something for a card. So now if you wanted to, part of the fun of these dies, you can also, you could die cut that outer and then you'd have a little popped up frame on each of them. There's a circle that perfectly fits. So you can cut those out and just have a frame to pop around. But I wanted to just use I love that versatility. I just want to use them as a little window to peek through. Um, 
Uh, and I see someone's already talking about, yes, we will be in Ohio. It's hard to believe it's next month. It's coming up really fast. We will be at the Pink Fresh booth, hanging out and doing Crete and Take It's. We've already created our cards. And if you are coming, I'll give you the little hint. If you haven't tried our washi yet, one of the days the make and take will actually be using our washi. So I hope you'll come see us if you're coming. All right, popping all those little bitties. But I know, right, the scallop, who says that? Christina, aren't those little scallops so pretty? I love that little, the window effect. All right, pop those little tiny dots in the trash. I think it mostly hit the trash. We'll just hope for the best there. All right, so now we have this perfectly fitting the front of the card. Now I'm trying to decide, do I want to trim it down so there's a border around the edges or just leave it? Hmm. <laughs> What do I want to do? I'm going to play with it this way first and then we'll decide because I might trim it down a little just so we can see the border of that green cardstock around. But what I'm leaning towards is we'll use that bigger greenery piece here on this. And then we'll pop one of those. I don't know which one yet. I decide. Oh, I kind of like that one, that little cutie tucked in there. So we might even have a bonus piece of greenery. And then I've got to pick what butterflies we want to use on each of these. I feel like this one calls for little bitty ones. That little, put that one down there. Mm -hmm. I just want to go down here with a sentiment tucked in. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. All right. I'm kind of liking that. we got to decide which ones we want on this. I definitely want to make sure I do a little trio of each one so we get one of each color on here. Actually looking pretty good. So we're going to have, you know what? We might just have to we'll have to see because I'm kind of pondering here. Can we use those little negative pieces? We might get a third card out of this too. It's possible. Never say never. That could be what we do is tuck a little extra. Hmm. We tuck that on another little. Let me grab a little more of that cream card. I've got one. I have some ready there. We might do that. We might throw a cover plate on there. I didn't get that prepared in advance. So I have to bear with me for just a second while I do that. Let me score this card base. But then we could actually use up all of the butterflies and all of the greenery and just have one full set of cards. How fun would that be? If I pop those two layers together, we even have that greenery kind of springing out of there. Pop that up on a little foam adhesive. And I'm liking that. First, the color is a little, let me just grab, so I didn't look to see, but let me see if I can find a cover plate that we can add just a little bit of interest onto that background there. Feel relatively certain that the dotted chevrons cover plates in stock. So any cover plate would work on this. I just I'm kind of grabbing this one on a whim and it was kind of a why not sort of moment, you know? So we're gonna just pop that in place. I'm gonna tape it down ever so slightly just to make sure it doesn't move because our cover plates don't have um, cut lines on them. You can use them directly on the front. All right, let me die cut this real quick. All right. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, I was only planning on 
two cards, but three cards is even better. Of course, you can just save all these pieces and use them for another time, but if you can get it all done at the same time, then why not? And I love cover plates for just adding some quick interest onto a card panel and everything. All right, let's pick up that little stack there. Oh yes, that does so much on there. Right, let's get this out of the way too. All right, now we just need to pick some sentiments. And then we can finish assembling these cards. And I also, now that I kind of have these on here, I think I am gonna trim a little, um, I could grab a cover plate or something, hold that closed a little bit better. And I think I'm just gonna use my paper trimmer and trim these down on each of these. So let's just pop those like that. Slide my paper trimmer here on the side. So just kind of ignore me here while I do this. I'm just gonna do a little bit from all four sides. So that I end up with an even border that matches with what I've already seen. Where I've die cut that. And yeah, I do like that. It does a really good job of That's a good change. So we'll do the same here on this. I'm just gonna pull those butterflies off so I keep them where I want them there. And we'll do a tiny little grammar from all the sides on this one. Or this is, I just want a straight line. I don't wanna, because I've got the scallop stitching there. Um, the stitch rectangles would probably be really lovely on this as well. I just didn't want to detract from the little scallop stitching. I wanted that to keep my focus on that. Um, so that's kind of why I went with this option and just stuck with that. All right. Oh, these are coming out so cute. I'm really loving this. The cream embossing and the cream paper is so perfect. And I still am laughing that here we go. Three cards. Totally not in the plan, but... I think it worked out well. All right, let's pick some sentiment. So we've got some really lovely ones on here. Um, that one kind of fits well there. So there's some good ones on there. We still pulled out a couple of the other washi release stamp ones because I might want a different sentiment. Um, Gretchen, yes, we always do typically share. Um, I'm a little behind on that, so that's kind of my goal for this week to try and. Um, catch up on posting some of those but all right so I also really I love that wishing you the happiest day this is from the artsy floral one so I think I'm gonna grab that one for one of my sentiments because I think I like that nestled in there on that one and then let me check here on the vines and roses I feel like I'm gonna okay so that one's going with that one You are amazing. Might really fit well in the middle there. May your day be as beautiful as you. I think I'm liking that. That or the miss your smile. I think I, hmm, I think I'm going to go with the you are amazing. I'm going to pull that one off of there. That's from the Vines and Roses set. And then I think on this one, we're going to stick with one of the ones from the set here. You are beautiful and brave. Maybe we'll go with that. I kind of like that one. All right. So we've got three sentiments here. I just need to stamp these out. This is probably going to be the part that um, slows us down more than anything. Let me grab my small little misty there. Push these up out of the way. So I know they're going to be a little bit off camera, but I need to make room to fit all of these in here. Pull out some of my little scraps. I'm gonna just do the sentiments. I'm not gonna go weird and wonky on the embossing and stuff. I'm just gonna stick with um, detail black for these. So I think I can fit a couple on each one. So we're gonna do that. Where's my, there it is, my detail black. I'm gonna go put my full size one out for stamping these. 
Right. I agree. The beautiful and brave is perfect for those butterflies. Right. And I'm just being really gentle as I stamp those. As with those really detailed uh, scripty sentiments, it's way better if you can keep those pretty details by not pressing too hard. So kind of just do a little fingertip press on that. All right, so there's one. Pull that. Damp rag and clean that one sentiment. All right, then this one goes back on the butterfly set. i got to put these away so we don't lose sentiments along the way. Then we've got this, wishing you the happiest day. I'm stamping them on the side because then I can die cut additional um, layers from the other side to layer together. So there's kind of a rhyme and reason to why I'm stamping where I am there. Okay, one more there, just to make sure we've got that one well stamped there. And we're gonna clean that one off. All right, that one's done. That one back on the artsy floral set. And then let's do that final, I love keeping scraps of cardstock. When I trim down my panels for hot foiling, I always have these extra ones. I'm gonna do this at an angle. I can fit more on there. And then let's get this sentiment stamp on there as well. Oops. I'm just gonna clean a little bit of ink off there so I don't dip my fingers in it or something messy. Same as before, we'll stamp that a couple times. All right, I think. That looks good. Clean that off. How are we doing? We're doing pretty good for time. I think we're going to make it. I don't know if I'll get all the way through um, adding embellishments, but considering that we got three cards done, I can add some bling after the live and it'll be totally because I haven't decided what I'm going to add on there yet. So that might be, might be a better plan than spending too much time trying to figure out what to use. All right, then of course, so they forgot that we're going to need naturally the coordinating die. So the You Are Amazing with the die from Vines and Roses. That goes with that one. One artsy floral. There's going to be crafter math on the desk for this one. Just going to say that now. I think that's the one that goes with that. Yes. And then back down to the butterflies. You are beautiful and brave. Let's see. I think that. Yep. Okay. Right on the first guess on all of these. <laughs> you know, though, Leah, a lot of the work was kind of a three for, you know, like this one was only because I had enough butterflies and I had those other little. So in a way, I feel like I'm just making one big card. They're just separated into three. <laughs> okay. So let's do some die cutting. I'm going to get my die cutting arm muscles going quickly here. I love the little mini die cut machine for this. Put that one down. I'm going to tape all of them down so I can just kind of zoom through it real quick once I get them all taped in place. Take my time and line that up so it matches up all. And let's do some die cutting. Mm. OK. 
tag. I just, I don't know. I know making too many multiples of one card, like a bunch of identical cards, that's just mind numbing for me and I don't love doing that. When I can make a similar card and just like change up the colors or like this one where I can do all the elements and make three that kind of fit well together and make a pretty set, but they're all unique and a little bit different. Then I am all over that. I love making sets of cards. Hmm, okay. And this one actually, I think I forgot to flip my plate. So that one actually didn't quite cut well. I'm going to just run that back through again one more time. That looks better. Yay for keeping that taped in place. Gotta remember to rotate those plates every time when they're kind of fresh and new like that. So rotate that one. This is the first time I've ever changed my plates. Yep, rotated that one all that time. All those cute little details that die cuts out, cut those out. All right, then we're just gonna do a repeat cut of each of these to quickly layer together for dimension. Seeing some talk about spell binders. I don't think I even saw yet. There was an announcement about something new that they're coming out with maybe. And I have definitely not heard since I haven't even heard the the rumor, so, okay. I'm gonna keep those taped down to my paper and I'll put those away afterwards so we don't get, I don't wanna lose them, but I also don't wanna spend. That one goes there. I'll leave that taped on to put away here in a little bit and less likely to be lost. And then run through again. Um, Mar Mar Mariella, if I say that right, um, this is stenciling. It was stamping your stencil. Bye, Anita. I think I saw that you just have to take off. Thanks for joining. All right, oh, and this is the other one. There we go. It doesn't matter. That's just a back layer. So I don't think I rotated my plate enough there. All right, I'll we'll leave that taped on there to deal with later. Also, move my die cut plate out of the way. Machine, I mean. And then let's do let's do some assembly here. Let's get some of these put together. A little chad piece in there. Let's glue all of our sentiments together. And yes, I am gonna go slightly over. So I kind of underestimated there as we started getting going. And I think I haven't used my glue in a few days. So in fact, I think I've used my glue in a week. There we go, that cleaned up well. Let's get all of these and then we'll just do some quick adhering down, get these cards quickly put together. And then, like I said, after the live, I will get some sparkle on there with some bling. And then I'll get some photos and I'll try and get these posted a little quicker, but at the very least I'll have a finished um, photo up by tomorrow at the latest of the cover photo on this, but I'll really try and get the blog post written up for these as well so that you can see the finished of all of these. Those lined up and straight. Okay. Same thing on this final one. Okay. All good. So just one layer on those for now. That'll just add little bit of dimension. And then let's get these. I'm gonna use just foam tape on the back of those. And I saw Leah just announced the winner. 
Thank you for getting that. That way no one is stuck here if they need to leave since I'm running a little bit over today. But congratulations to Rose Griffin. Your uh, take comment there has all the info you need to claim your prize, but you're just going to need to email Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com and provide all of your mailing info and then give her two to three business days to get back to you. She gets a lot of emails. So if you don't hear right away, uh, it doesn't mean she didn't get it. So I'll get back to you with that quickly. All right. Want a little bit of foam behind these. Maybe not absolutely necessary, but why not, right? Right, and if anyone needs to leave now, like I said, I'll get these posted later. So if you want to hang with me, please do. But if you need it there, it does need to go. So sorry for running over just a bit today, but I just kind of got into it and couldn't stop. <laughs> All right, so there's that. And then we just need to tuck in our little tidbits of things. And I want to kind of curl up some of these because I'm just going to adhere them with liquid glue. Although that one, I might, I might actually use foam on that one. Is it possible to have too much foam? I don't know. All right. And then I just got to pick where to, that actually kind of looks good there. I kept that under the side there so it pops up. I kind of like that. All right, let's get some liquid glue. We'll get one of these all assembled and then I'll finish the others all one at a time. As I'm doing that, I think I'm just going to put glue on that side of that butterfly there so that one half of it can pop up. There we go. I like that. All right. Then just down the center of this one, tuck that in there. Really debating here. Maybe switching out. Yeah, I think I'm going to switch out those greenery there. The only reason is I have a little orange on the side of that one and it's, it's kind of bugging me a little. <clears throat> So I'm gonna swap that out just because I can. And then I think I'm just gonna let, let's just glue that down a little there and then we'll do, I don't think I actually wanna pop it up with foam but I do wanna pop it on top of that leaf. Curl up the other leaves for dimension but then we'll just leave that like that. All right, oh, my little smudgy, dirty, there's one down. Let's move on to the next one and see if we can get these other two finished. All right, a little more foam tape for this one. I need a little more, um, top, a little bit more surgery here of my foam tape, some quick strips here to get this one adhered down. I think that's actually going to be, let's see, we'll do, there's one little tiny bit there. Sorry, I think I'm a little off camera here on this. Make sure that I have those uh, nice and stable on there. It's a little small, so. We'll just let that one go. I just want to make sure all the way around is sturdy and good to go. Not going too crazy, but. All right. All the little, it's only bad thing. Now I did a few little pieces on this one, which more things to peel off. I've got that centered and at the top of my card base. Then curl up all these little pieces ever so slightly there. Or we tuck them in there. I think we kind of had that. 
and a nestle down there. And those are looking good there. All right, so let's get all of these glued down. This one should be pretty quick and easy. And you can see I'm just kind of doing the glue in the center of the butterflies because that's all it's going to take to hold them in place. And then it will leave things to float free for dimension. Sentiment in there. Pop these up on more foam adhesive but with that little shadow layer and the two layers together for the sentiment. Whoops, that happened. Let me clean that glue off there in just a second. Yeah, before I stick my hand in it anymore, I'm put a little on my hand there. All right. And then we just need that last little butterfly and I'm sticking my sentiment down because I wanted to kind of nestle the, snuggle that little butterfly down really close to the sentiment, maybe even just slightly, just hitting the edge of the H on the happy there. Of course, leaving it floating free. All right, second card done. One more to go. I'm gonna do a couple layers of foam on this one. This one's gonna actually end up being probably the most dimensional, but. There, straight across. And one more there. Not worried about it being super heavy on the foam adhesive on the back, just enough to keep it all stable and good. This one just needs a little square in the center of the back there. And this one's gonna snuggle back in there. We'll tuck that in first. Not fun to snuggle things on cards. We always love that little. There we go, I'm making all of those fun little. Yeah, okay. We're in the home stretch. We're just about there. And then I will spin this camera around and we'll do a final, final goodbye there. Try to do a quick little recap showing of all of these cards. Sentiment down there. All right, last one. Okay. And there we have it, final card. So let me get the glue bottle closed up. And how far over? Oh, about 10 minutes are not as bad as it could have been, I guess. There is our set of three cards. So here's a quick close up, card number one. Card number two, and the bonus card that was not planned, card number three. <laughs> Thank you for all of those who hung out with me and stayed all the way till the end of my crazy scheme here. Let me switch the camera around and say one final congratulations to Rose. And also a final big thank you to all of you who hung around. Whew. That was marathon crafting. It's gonna be fun to get all those photographed and posted. And I hope that inspired you if you have the butterflies to play with them, or maybe if you didn't, it might've enabled you to see how fun and versatile they are. The other great thing is all those butterflies and the greenery mesh with so many of our other washi or even just floral sets. You can never have too many butterflies. So, um, and then you could also so easily recreate these cards with the washi and get an entirely different look too. So. 
just throwing that idea out. And on that note, I've kept you guys a long time already. I'm going to finish these off, get some bling on, get some photos of them, and hopefully get them posted in the next day or two. Thank you for hanging out with me. And I will see you hopefully in the comments on Thursday. We have our scrapbook YouTube live with Kathleen this week on Thursday. So same time, same place. And we always have a great time. So I'll look forward to chatting with you then. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Bye for now.